Hello, welcome to my channel and thanks for tuning into this video. Today I'm going to be doing a full review and demonstration of the new Wayne Goss Edit Collection. So I have all seven brushes here and I used exclusively these brushes to do this whole face of makeup today. So if you'd like to see how I put this look together, how I used all these brushes and my thoughts on the brushes, as well as some comparisons with other brushes in my collection, just keep on watching. All right, let's get started with foundation. So I have a mixture, half and half, of the Fenty Ease Drops and the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body Foundation. Everything's gonna be listed below so you can see the shades I'm using and everything. But I've just really lately been enjoying a combination of these two products. They're both very, you know, light coverage, um, but I really like the tones of both of these. They have quite similar tones, nice and light and fresh and bright for my skin tone. And I've just been enjoying how they work together. The MAC one is obviously more radiant and the Fenty one is a little bit matte and I actually don't really love the Fenty one on its own, but I find that when it's mixed with the MAC one, they, they just work really well together and give a very nice finish to the skin. So that's what I've got. I'm using the number two brush from Wayne Goss for this. This is the one that was suggested to be used as a foundation brush. It has many other uses as well, but of the collection, this is the one that's most suitable for foundation. It blends really nicely. It's fluffier and a little bit more flexible than my regular foundation brush, which is this Westman Atelier Blender brush. And of course, this is natural goat hair, whereas the Westman Atelier brush is synthetic. All right, so there's the foundation on. I think this brush worked great for it and I'm really happy with it. For concealer, I'm gonna be using, again, two products. I have my Kosas and my Armani Luminous Silk. I'm gonna use the Kosas over most of the areas that I want to just add a little bit more coverage. And I'm going to put the Armani on these blemishes that I have down on my chin here and the pigmentation that I have left over from the blemishes as well. Actually, I'll do a little mixture of the two, but the Armani is just a little bit of a deeper shade than the Kosas, so I find it works quite well for covering blemishes. And for blending the concealer, I'm gonna use the number five brush. This is one of the less pointy ones. It still comes to a little bit of a tapered point here, but it's not as pointy as, say, this one, which comes right to a more narrow point, and this one too. And then the one that's sort of the most similar to the size of the five is the four, which again, you can see is a lot pointier. So going in with the number five and just blending in all this concealer. All right, the concealer is all blended in, and I did enjoy using this brush. I think it worked quite well. I found it worked best with more of a sort of um, padding motion rather than a sweeping motion for the concealer, but it worked well. However, I think I will still be going to this one. This is the Real Techniques setting brush, and this I just love so much for concealer, so I think this is still going to remain my go-to for concealer, but I'm sure I'll be able to find another use for this one. For today, I just wanted to try it for concealer because to me it seemed the most appropriate out of the set for concealer. Now I'm going in with powder, and this is the Wayne Goss 03 brush, and I'm gonna use my Kosas powder. I think I'm gonna be using a lot of Kosas today and it seems to be picking up quite nicely. And I'm just going to powder everywhere I normally would, around the nose, under the eyes, and basically anywhere I'd put concealer is where I want to powder. All 
All right, so the powder is all on and I think that worked really nicely for the powder. This is very similar to the Wayne Goss Artist brush in the medium size. You can see they're almost pretty much identical in terms of their shape and size, but of course there are different um, fibers that are used in here. So this one is blue squirrel, whereas this one is undyed goat hair. So this one isn't going to be quite as soft, but that also means that it's going to be a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more resilient than the blue squirrel, and also going to pick up a little bit more product than the blue squirrel is, and it's still really lovely and soft. So I definitely see myself using this a whole lot, and probably mostly like I used it today for my powder placement. Now I'm gonna get into bronzer and again, a Kosas product. I'm gonna use the Kosas Baked Bronzer in the light shade. And for that, I'm going to use the number one Wayne Goss brush. And this is very similar to the Large Artist Series brush. Again, very similar shape and size. There might be a little bit more of a point to the Goss Edit brush, but they're virtually identical in those terms but of course again we have the blue squirrel versus the goat hair so I'm thinking the goat hair will be quite good for this bronzer because I do like goat hair brushes best with this bronzer I find the blue squirrel doesn't quite pick it up quite as much as I would like it to so this should be really nice I think All right, I loved using that. I see myself using this a ton for bronzer, just like I used the Large Artist brush. That's my main bronzer brush. I definitely think I'm gonna be using this number one brush a lot for bronzer as well. Now, while I'm still in the bronzer, I think I might as well do my lip shading. And for that, I'm gonna use the smallest brush, which is the number seven. And just gonna go in there and do a little bit of shading around the lips. Okay, I loved using that for that job because these are calligraphy style brushes, so they have this point to them, which allows you to be really precise, but since they're tapered, they're also wider down below, so it allows you to get a precise application of the pigment, but then it just blends out so nice and smoothly as well because of the shape of the brush. So I loved that number seven for the lip shading. And now I think it's time to move into blush. I'm gonna be using the O2 brush again because I wanna do a cream blush and then I might put powder over top, I'm not sure. But actually I'm gonna mix a few different cream blushes all from Salt New York and I'm gonna start with the lilac shade. So I just sort of wiped off that O2 brush on my microfiber towel because that's the one that I used for foundation and just went right into the pan with the lilac blush. And that's applying really nicely. So I'm finding it really easy to apply. It's almost blending itself out because it has enough fluffiness to it, I think, that it can blend really nicely, but it's also compact enough and not overly flexible so that you still have control over your placement. So it's kind of the best of both worlds when it comes to applying at least a cream blush for me. Okay, I know I said I was gonna use a few blushes, but I think I'm actually quite happy with just the lilac shade. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. And I'm gonna move on to the eyes now. I watched Hung Van Gogh's most recent video this morning and he did this really pretty quite simple, smoky lilac eye. And I was inspired by that, so I wanna do something sort of along the lines of what he did in that, but I wanna use green on the lid. So I'm gonna start with pistachio as my main lid color, and then this um, green tea is gonna be my sort of smoking out color. And then on the lower lash line, I'm planning to use some purples, but I haven't chosen which ones I'm gonna do yet. 
So going in with the eye brushes, I'm gonna start out laying down my overall color with the number four here. And the number four is very similar to the Artist Series brush in the small size. So again, it's just the same as the other comparisons I've done, almost the same shape and size, but different fibers, and therefore they can be used for slightly different purposes. And of course, all of these new ones from the Edit Collection can be used with creams as well as powders. So I've got my pistachio color there and I'm just going to place this all over the lid. Right, so there's the green all over the lid and it worked well. This isn't normally the type of brush that I would choose for um, doing like a bright color on my lid because generally I like to kind of pack those on a little bit and this is just a bit more fluffy and um, it's not quite as precise as I would prefer for this type of a job. But actually for the technique I'm doing with this look where I'm just having this color all over and then building up a darker color to smoke it out a little bit, I was able to get a little bit into the smaller parts there, the hard to get at parts. So it worked just fine, but it probably wouldn't be my first choice for that type of a job. In the future, I think I would like to try using the 05 brush for that type of job, but I just didn't want to use it today because it has concealer on it right now. So moving on to doing that little bit of sort of building up and smoking out, I'm going to go into the green tea shade and I'm going to use the 06 brush first and see how that goes. All right, so again, that was fine, but probably not my first choice for the type of brush I'd like to use for this job. It's a little bit too flexible, so I'm gonna take the number seven and go into that same color and just try to intensify the color a little bit. Yeah, and that's working a lot better. It's a lot easier to just sort of draw the color on where you want it. And then if you wanted to just blend it out a little bit more, you could go back in with the number six and that is perfect for that type of a task. I actually want a little bit more depth in the outer corner still. So I'm gonna um, take the number seven brush again. I'm gonna go into this peanut butter shade. I might regret this, but hopefully it's just gonna add that little bit of shadow and depth that I want. Alright, so I basically drew the color on with the number seven and then I'm just blending it in with the number six and that's working great. Didn't muddy up the color too much, but just added the tiniest little bit of shadow on top of that darker green. Now on the lower lash line, I'm going to go with Honey Lavender and again, I'm going to take the number seven brush and get my sort of precise application with that.
And to get a little bit more depth on the outside, I'm taking the tarot shade, which is a very, is a much deeper kind of um, royal purple type shade. And then I've wiped off the number six so there's no pigment left and I'm just going to use that to soften out the bottom edge. On the inner corner I pulled out my Vizier Koi palette. I think I'm going to use this shade right here. These shades do have names but they're not written on the palette so I don't know the names of any of them but this is sort of the nice light aqua kind of shade. And I used the number seven for that as well. And I think that worked really well. I think this is a perfect inner corner brush. If you want this kind of an inner corner where it's quite diffused and blended and you're able to really easily carry the color up and down, keeping enough precision, but not being overly pinpointed about your application. So that's it for the eyeshadow. I'm just gonna put on some liner and mascara and then I will be back. We'll finish up with highlighter and round up my thoughts on this whole collection. All right, so I finished up the eyes and again, I put the number seven to use. I used my Victoria Beckham Cocoa liner. I did my tight line and then a little bit on the top of the lash line, just sort of halfway and then out. And then I took the number seven and just kind of smudged it all out along the lash line and pulled it out a little bit at the end. And that worked really well. This isn't gonna ever be a precise liner brush, but it's I found it great for doing that really sort of smudgy, smoky, um, imprecise line that just adds that nice little bit of depth and definition to the lash line. And then I did my lips. I used the Salt New York Peach Cream Blush and just put that on my lips and then toned it down a little bit with a touch of concealer. And I think I wanna put a little bit of the peach blush on my cheeks too, just to tie in the lip really nicely. So again, I'm gonna take that number two brush into the peach and just tap that right on the cheeks. Now for highlighter, I wanted to try using cream highlights as well. So I'm gonna mix my two salt cream highlights. I have pearl and beige here, and I'm going to use the same brush I used for the concealer, which is the number five. I think this is just the most likely to work for these cream highlights. Normally I apply these ones with my fingers and just tap them in, but I wanted to see how this brush would do. It seems to be working really nicely actually. And I think like just like how I was applying the concealer with the same brush, it seems that kind of just tapping it in is better than trying to do a swiping motion. All right, so the look is finished and I want to just sort of round up my thoughts. I tried to talk about each brush as I was using it, but overall the collection I think is quite comprehensive, but not completely comprehensive because I do think that it doesn't have a really precise brush for the eyes, but I think it pretty much covers everything else. Your foundation and your cream products, I think can be applied really nicely with that number two brush. I think the number one is perfect for bronzer. It could be used for blush as well. It's a little bit bigger, I think, than I would prefer for blush, but it's gonna be perfect for bronzer. The number three, I think, is excellent for powder and I think would work great for a powder highlighter too. And then if you wanted a more precise powder highlight, you could use the number four even for that. But the number four is also pretty good for doing like just an all over wash of color on the eyes. I think 
for me it would be more appropriate for if I was really just doing a wash of just like one color and pretty imprecisely placing that on the eyes. This would be perfect for that. But I think that this could also be used for setting powder under the eyes. You could perhaps even use it for blending in your concealer. But I prefer the number five, I think, for the concealer because it's just a little bit less pointy and just a little bit more appropriate for that type of an application. And I thought it worked super well for the cream highlight as well. And then the number six, I think the number six for me, for the looks that I tend to do, is really going to shine as a blending out brush. So after I've placed my sort of darker shadow color, probably with the number seven brush, number seven was just so great for just drawing on that color. And then blending out with the number six was great. I think the number six is also going to be really good for hooded eyes. And that's something that Wayne Goss said as well. Um, and I do have, you know, partially hooded eyes. They're not super hooded, but they are a bit. And I think that's going to be great for doing a really nice sort of blended out addition of a darker shadow um, in the crease. I think it's going to be really easy to get that shape in there. And again, because it's pointed and has a bit more volume in the middle, it's going to be great for placing the color and then blending it out really nicely. I think out of the whole collection, what I think I'm probably going to end up using most, of course, this is only my first or second time using these brushes. I used the number two and the number five yesterday for my foundation and concealer. All the other ones, this was my first time using them. So it's going to take a little bit more testing out and using them in my everyday routine to figure out which ones I use the most but I definitely see myself using the number one a lot. The number two, we'll see. I think this is gonna be a cream blush brush for me for the most part, because I still do love my Westman Atelier blender brush for foundation, and I like that it's synthetic because I don't feel bad about washing this very frequently, whereas you gotta be a little bit more careful with the goat hairs. And then for concealer, I. I don't really see myself going to the number five for my daily concealer brush because I love this Real Techniques one so much. And again, the Real Techniques is synthetic and so I can, you know, feel okay about washing it pretty frequently. And then I think that the number seven, so I think it's going to be these three that I use the most, uh, plus the number three for powder is probably going to be used quite a lot. So these are my favorites, one, two, three, and seven. But the other ones are great too. And as you saw, it's definitely possible to get a full face of makeup done with this set. So that's it for me today. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I'd love to see those. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would really love for you to do so. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.